So in our last tutorial, we were using this code to talk about how we can use arrays to store data. And in our last lecture, we talked about loops. So let's look at how we can use loops to actually retrieve all of this data for us automatically without us having to go through manually and type in 00, zero or, or whatever other combination we might want to type in. So the easiest way to do this would be with a for loop. And because we've got multiple dimensions here, we're going to put multiple for loops in our code. I'm just going to change this to J. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this code down into our for loops. But we're going to change this first number to I and the second number to J. And this way, when we run our for loops, it's going to cycle through all of the possible options, changing both dimensions, variables, and give us the outputs. So you can see that we've got John A, Bob B, which is the same data that we've put into our array. Now this length property is available for virtually every data type or every single variable. And all it does is tells us how many objects in the case of an array are within that variable. If we're using strings for example without an array it will tell us the actual length of the string so the length property can be very useful depending on what you're doing. So getting data out of arrays is one of the most common ways to use loops but one of the other most common ways to use them is to actually ver verify user input so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comment out all of this code. And we're going to create a new input. So what we're going to do is ask the user to type a number. Any number, it doesn't really matter. And we're then going to actually check whether that number is, or rather we're going to check whether that input is a number. So we're going to use a do loop in this case. As we discussed in the lecture, a do loop says do, and then it has the condition at the end of it. So if we just did this, we would get an input. Sorry, we also need the while in there. So again, anything inside of these brackets is going to be repeated while we're going to be doing this check, or rather while this check is true. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if the input can be converted into a number. And the way we're going to do this is to pass the input as a number and check that it's greater than zero. But remember that strings or all variables are limited to the scope and a string or any variable cannot be accessed outside of the curly braces in which it was declared. So what we're going to do is just copy this and delete the declaration and we'll declare it up here. We're not going to put any value in there. So when we run this now, it's going to run this code and ask the user to type a number. After it asks the user to type a number, it's going to perform this check to see whether the number is greater than zero. And 
And then in this case, we're going to ask for another number. If we type the letter A, for example, that's not and greater than zero. That's not even a number. And so we're going to get this error. We'll be looking later on at how to resolve this error and actually be able to work around it. But you could do this sort of code and ask for a number above five. And in this case, so it would need to be less than or equal to for it to repeat. So if we type the number six now, it will pass our checks because that's greater than number six or greater than the number five rather. If we type the number four, it's going to ask us again to type a number over five. Same with number five, because it's less than or equal to in our codes down here. It's going to repeat the code in the curly braces until that condition is met. So you can use this type of loop to actually validate the inputs from your users. As I say, we'll look at how we can work around that error that we received earlier later on. But this will at least provide some very basic validation checking for you.